What's up, Familia? You. We were just visited today by the epic brother, Mr. Ryan Fontana, That's Soul founded. Panther. Mm -hmm. We have some history with this big cat from Los Angeles. And so when he dropped into Mystic Manor, I thought we'd continue our tradition of sipping delicious superfood coffee, taking the tropics, uh -huh. and riffing <laughs> as masculine brothers on the path. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show, Mr. Ryan. Thanks for having me. Good to see you boys. We got the brothers. Let's shake it out. Thank yeah. you. That's <laughs> a masculine here. thing to do. Give a good old handshake. Come on now. So we, we set an 11 minute timer and we're going to really free flow this. It's going to be organic what's coming up. I'm going to jump right in. Um, what's coming up for me is what we were just talking about off camera, which is doing like very deep work. We happen to be talking about plant medicine, um, but I'm feeling this like trend and all the stuff I've been reading and what we've been training in this tantric energetics is all about dealing with your shit, mm -hmm. AKA doing the work, which is personal development, which is individuation. There's a lot of names for it. And why is it important? And why have we invested at this point, tens of thousands of dollars into it? <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. And so that's the one I'm going to toss out into the floor. Yeah. What it, what it quickly means to me is if you're going to be a leader and help others transform, you can only bring them up to the level that you yourself have transformed. Oh. So I found that just when I think I'm like at a plateau and I'm like, Oh, I'm good. I'm good for a while. Like I can just like teach or whatever. I find, come to find out I haven't even begun and there's a ton more work that I can like humble myself with. Yeah. Yeah. The work never ends. Nope. Ever. And it's like both maddening and also liberating at the same time. Yeah. Cause it's like, when can I stop investing large amounts of money in my time into, into working on myself? Does it ever, do we ever get to the destination? It's like, <laughs> No, well you can. It's like when do you want to stop eating? Yeah, yeah, at what point? When do you, when can you just give up and stop eating food? Uh huh. You know, <laughs> especially if you're growth oriented. It's like, to me, what what growth is. We were talking about this off camera. Mm -hmm. Is, um, there's the conceptual growth, which is reading a bunch of books, mm -hmm. which is cool. But the experiential work yeah. is when you're working with a coach, or when you're in a retreat setting and you're doing bioenergetic stuff, or just literally using your actions to move outside of your comfort zone and expand your container that is the that those pay the highest dividends in my yeah. Opinion. yeah there's this idea I'm reading this book uh, willpower doesn't exist and it's kind of one of the, the sentiments is that heroes don't come from sitting around being by themselves and training and wanting to become a fucking hero uh -huh. they become a hero because the situation demands it so by going into these trains, going into these group, you know, communities and really putting myself through these really intense and sometimes scary experiences, um, I'm able to kind of become this hero instead of just sitting around reading about it. Yeah, yeah. or prepare to be a hero when, when needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, I was just thinking as you said that, a hero can't be a hero if he's trying to be a hero for himself. Yeah. A hero is a hero because he's not thinking about himself, he's helping a bunch of people oh, yeah. who need, need him or need something yeah. to yes. show up. And most heroes don't call themselves heroes either. They're mm -hmm. like, I just, I'm not a hero. I just did what was necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So true. Well, and you said the situation demands it, right? Yeah. And sometimes you'll just find yourself in a situation where you have to act fast. What I find that we're often doing is putting ourselves in those situations, right? Mm -hmm. And there's tons of different personal development modalities out there. And it's a journey. And the destination is the journey to your point. Like, when will I get there? We'll never. <laughs> the whole process is that journey. And I find that I will get in different seasons where for a season I'll be reading a lot of books and like gaining the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then for the next seasons, all right, enough of that. Now I'm going to put into action and gain wisdom. Yeah. And that's where like the cycle of the hero's journey keeps coming around. You answer a call, you go through initiation, you go back home, you return and integrate. Then you start over and you keep yeah. going and flow. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. If you know that a high pressure situation where other people are in need of you is what makes you grow. And I guess logically, you should be seeking those situations <laughs> fairly often. Mm -hmm. And I think for a while in my life, I unconsciously found myself in situations where leadership was needed or transformation or something needed to happen. And so I stepped up just because like, I had no other choice. Yeah. And now facilitating experiences and going to these things consciously, it's like, oh, wow, this is the best container to create the best conditions mm -hmm. in which this can occur for an ordinary person. Yeah. Like we're actually ordinary men right now. We're just ordinary men. Nothing special has happened to us other than being in those situations X number of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it. the reps, babe, you're creating them too. Like yeah. I find you can create them in any single moment. Like right now I feel my heart beating a little bit because mm -hmm. I want to I create, I'm going to choose to create a moment, which is I found, I found myself earlier when we started this video, 
getting into a, a, a role. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm about to talk, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, let, let, let people see how fucking cool I am or whatever. I actually <laughs> I felt that. And then when I realized I was doing that, my heart started beating because I was like, you know, I could create a very embarrassing moment right now for myself and just be like, whoa, I was just performing a bit. Yeah. And now I'm actually going to like look into your eyes and actually feel what's happening Come on. Of, like Come talking on. to the camera. It feels way better. It like, does. I feel more comfortable after you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh, cool. We're on the same team now. You know, like there's no, no one's trying to like, yeah. you're present yeah. here. You're not trying to get something through the, through the camera. Yeah. And I can totally relate to that. Uh-huh. I know like, I, I don't know when it shifted for me, but I, I, I remember feeling that every time I would turn the camera on, it was like, I had to turn on. Yeah. I had to like be something. And that's why now it's like when we have wrists, I just enjoy turning the camera on and just connecting and that's mm-hmm. just being a fly on the wall. Right. Because I'm not, I don't need to prove anything to, to the camera. Mm-hmm. It's like I want to connect with you and the magic that comes from that, they can gain from being there and witnessing. Right. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Yeah. We were talking earlier. I've noticed this. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this on Facebook Live, but when I can see myself like right now, yeah. it, it kind of creates that scenario. And so I was like, man, we should flip it the other way. Uh-huh. So you can't see, and it's like, it is a fly on the wall, just for the per, the pure presence. Yeah. Um, yeah, that performance, I think, is so tricky. And I think it's coming from a good place. It's wanting to bring your best self to the table sure. and right. service. Yeah. And yet, often, it ends up maybe not authentically communicating what we want to communicate. Right. Which never doesn't feel good. Because afterwards, you're like, what, what happened? Well, I think there's a, there's a part of um, giving the the audience the power to make their own conclusions and learn through proxy mm-hmm. so for yeah, instance like wow. there's a power in, in the reason we love movies so much is you go to the theater and you you gain your own takeaway from it you gain your mm-hmm. own like re- relating and connecting to what's happening and it's not trying to be put on you totally and i think that as the um as we evolve as a society and as the personal development world evolves and consciousness kind of evolves and things stop working like back in the day like when tony robbins first came out he was you know the guru and he didn't show any other dimension and people bought into that and now it's like there's so much noise out there that all people want to feel is something real because there's so much falsity being projected that you can tell when someone's just being a human and you're like oh wow like how special like let me watch and gain my own insights from that and we can trust that they can do that we don't need to tell them how to break through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like way more fun on our end, isn't it? Uh, like, way more. Trust, man. That's actually how I feel about you, man. You, you're one of the people who I've spent the least amount of time with, yet feel the most connected to, man. Every time that we, I mean, I've had very deep conversations with you where I've been having like women challenges, dude, and you yeah. were fucking there for me that one time in particular. Yeah, I remember. And it's like, I've, I, I've, I've spent, you know, not tons of time with you, but that time I have spent, I feel so fucking connected to you because of that. I feel this like, I feel like your your essence, your vulnerability. It's like mm-hmm. I trust you because of that. Yeah. Not a lot of bullshit coming out of you. I think that's what we're mm-hmm. all. Maybe that's why we do all this work, man. How can I remove all the programs and all the bullshit yeah. that's inside of me so I can actually like mm-hmm. bear my soul? Yeah, and I think that there's like nothing wrong with masks in a sense, or like social masks. Sure. We have like this funny little improv thing we do called playing with masks, and it's just being aware that you have a mask on. Because I've watched some of our earlier videos, and like some of mine in particular, where I cringe. I'm like, oh, uh, who yeah. is that idiot there <laughs> who's like trying so hard to be cool and to be liked <laughs> and to like for people to think that I'm valuable and that I bring something to the table and I can teach you something. And then I look at like the more recent videos in the evolution, it's so clear how we just come into who we actually are instead of who we want to believe or who like we want people to think we are. Yeah. So it's like it just flows freely and authentically and organically. That's great news, man, to look yeah. at the old videos and be like, wow, yeah, that's yeah. kind of painful to watch. Because <laughs> it shows yeah. how much you've grown. Right? Yeah, You're like, exactly. Holy shit. Yeah. So true. Yeah, I've noticed that for sure, man. Uh-huh. I've noticed that in your in your videos and just being around you. When I saw you um, recently, where was that? At Music House? At Music House, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, wow, it's really nice to see you, man. Like, you're so grounded and, like, present. Yeah. yeah. That, nothing nothing that better than feeling that. Yep. Yeah. How'd I feel in your heart? Come on, my heart chakra was really just exploded. It's my brother. He's got a big heart. You broke me. You're my boy, little <laughs> nugget. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the uh, for that acknowledgement and for seeing me that. Man. Absolutely, yeah, dude. That. When I saw you walk through the door, I was like, "Fuck yeah, man!" Like, <laughs> seeing a lot like a like a brother, man. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. dude. Squad, man. Squad. He's got soul. Got a lot of soul. Like I 
feel like I learned so much just talking to you when we lived together in LA. And we, we were noticing as brothers how, you know, we've missed that connection. I missed that connection. Mm -hmm. And so like started like starting it up again. And we just recently filmed another first like kind of virtual coffee riff sesh, which starts with superfoods and nootropics, but ends in existential breakthroughs. <laughs> you know, that, that journey, I love taking that journey with you. Like every time if something new comes up, like in this moment, it's like so obvious why authenticity is important. Yeah. Like the idea of like a false self image, like Jung called it a persona. Like, look, I'm a personal development coach. And like mm -hmm. you you put this out there. I've definitely put this out there a lot in my old videos too. Mm -hmm. And people love that. And then I'm like the real me is like, wait, I want love. Like what what am I doing? Yeah. Like you, you actually want the love, but you're you're like sabotaging yourself mm -hmm. yeah. in a way. Yeah. Totally. And I it, it's great to share, valuable to share of how we before we turned the camera on for this video, there was a dialogue for like 15 minutes of like what the topic was going to be, yeah. what's the call to yeah. action, how we're going to make it efficient, and then yeah. we're like, wait a minute, let's just like drop in, oh, fucking hang out, yeah, yeah, yeah. turn the camera on, mm -hmm. maybe look at it once or twice. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it again, I don't think there's anything wrong with like having intentionality going into something. Like, yeah, you all. have a retreat that you're that's yeah. coming up, and you want to talk about it and share it and get people excited about it, or you are performing like you're, you're an actor of sorts or whatever the case may be like that's a fun thing to do but again it's like the awareness around it and not forcing something mm, like yeah, that and i think that's go. what was happening coming into this is like we really wanted this to be profound and so we found ourselves forcing like topics and nothing felt good and then finally you just came in and you're like hang on a second this this doesn't feel good and yeah. we all were feeling this collective energy i believe yeah finally, i was like let's just go Let's just have fun. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I have a quick question for all uh, of you. Actually. I'm actually, uh, yeah, 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 and after that, I'm going to honor our creative principles. Cool. Absolutely, Perfect. man. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, is that like we're talking about like performing and stuff on camera, but uh, I was just thinking about how often I perform in front of like family members that I feel can't yeah. handle the real me. Like if I were to go tell a family member that I just got done with like an aboga experience going fucking psychedelics, like they wouldn't understand is my story and they would maybe look down upon me or they wouldn't love me as much mm. or even worse I would hurt them like they would feel like mm. that's what's wrong you're like hurting me for doing this wrong thing and so I just won't bring it up and that's actually a thing that I've kind of struggled with it's like how real do you be to a person who really doesn't want to hear that like they don't want to feel that part of you totally. yeah you know? I like to speak to that yes before the camera goes off yeah we're <laughs> classic so when I was at the Hoffman process in uh, Northern California oh. seven days deep into work family stuff there was a, a uh, uh, a practice of transference where yeah. you come to the teacher and say you know you are displaying this quality that just like my dad or my mom and I went into this pattern just like my mom or my dad yada yada and people were doing these negative transferences throughout the week together and what I found fascinating was that people came to me to do transference but they were positive transferences so for instance it wasn't like I saw you being like closed off and I judged you it was like when I first saw you I, I made a story that you were too spiritual or better than me, and so I went into withdrawing and hiding, or I went into feeling defensive. Oh, wow. Across the board, people were coming to me telling me positive things and how they went into negative patterns. Uh -huh. And I had this breakthrough where I was like, holy shit, no matter if you play big or you play small, people are going to have their own shit around you. Oh, so you man. might wow. as well just fucking shine as bright and normal as you can because you owe it to yourself, yeah. right? You're gonna you're gonna tweak people out no matter what you be. Mm -hmm. So might as well be authentic to yourself. Ooh, I love that, man. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Beautiful, man. There's no reason to hold back the light. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. just, just shine it, mm -hmm. you know, and the shadows will be there. Yeah. And that's what comes with light. And there's there's one more thing I'll say about this too is that I think that what's coming up for me is the idea between like radical honesty and like maybe mental transparency and the concept of grounded honesty that we're talking about, right? So it's like. In the context of our grandparents, I think that's one that you're probably that's thinking exactly about, who are like former pastors of a non-denominational, charismatic, slain in the spirit, very flamboyant type of church. Like you don't need to go out of your way to share with them an iboga experience you had, right? Right. Now, if it comes up somehow organically, you also aren't serving anybody and like lying or withholding it. Yes. I think there's a Great level of like tact within it, though. Yeah. You know, and it's just, and that's where putting the reps happens. And I think erring on the side of being a bit more open and radically honest is going to serve you well in the long term. There might be some, you know, stretching and fun, comfortable scenarios within that, but it's going to aggregate in a positive direction. Yeah. For me, it's like, what's more uncomfortable? <clears throat> Managing people's expectations, yeah. negative or positive, and like all their energy, 
or living unfulfilled. Mm. Like, there, there's no question for me, and that's what we'll leave you guys on. Yeah. Really, it's like, shine your light fully. Don't take responsibility. Don't take on other people's shit. Yeah. And you can still love everyone and not be an asshole. <laughs> and a provocateur yeah. and a trigger just for the sake of doing that. And, and I can and say project, that because I like to do that sometimes. <laughs> and project that the people in your life are powerful enough to handle it. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if you project that they're not, you're not doing them any good either. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Amen. So Ryan, I want I want to ask where people can find you and what you're getting involved in right now before we close. Yeah, I mean people can check me out. You can check me out on Instagram at soul underscore panther. Um, and also if you're a man and you're looking to do some deep inner work, uh, I'm launching another round of man cave, which is a four month men's conscious brotherhood online with Preston smiles, JD Azuma and a bunch of other awesome men. So if that's interesting to you, um, I'll put a link in the comments on this video and they can click and and apply for that. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Those of you aware of misfit mayhem, it's going down it starts May 4th. Here in San Diego, yeah. first co-produced festival with the brands here, Desert Rising. Dope. Want to see you there? And Soul Panther's gonna be, be there, there man. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Be on the decks. Yeah. Yes. Come on. He's gonna be dropping toony beats. Toonies. Toonies. <laughs> if you're a little more intense, bungee jump with us in LA, yeah. May nineteenth, and or come transform your entire life with wow. kind of what we've been talking about. Santa Cruz, end of May, be running our first ever mastermind. Love you, fam.